The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship this morning. We are so grateful to welcome all of you um, and those of you who are worshiping with us behind the camera and running uh, lights, not lights, but sound and, and video up in the balcony. Today we begin a new theme for the month of May where we will focus on worshiping God. And of course, that is our focus every Sunday morning, but this particular theme um, helps us to be um, even more mindful of what we are doing here in the sanctuary and why and how. Um, so let us, in this time of worship, become aware of God's presence around us, and breathe in the very breath of God, and allow our God to call us into this very sacred time. Let us worship God. Please stand if you're able and join me in the call to worship. We come from all walks of life, the rich, the poor, the struggling, and the secure. And God calls us all. We bring our hearts to this time and place, hearts holding joy and sorrow, questions and wonders. And God knows us. We offer what we have to give, our talents and our imperfections, our faith and our doubt, our hope and our hands. And God loves us. Let us worship God. call to confession. Sin is separation, and we know many separations in our lives. We admit to God the deep chasms between ourselves and our neighbors, between ourselves and God. Relying on God's love and mercy, then let us pray together. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Loving and merciful God, you know our hearts and you know our lives. 
We confess to you that which causes separation, that which causes pain, that which causes distress, and that which breaks down. We confess to you our part in those things. In humility and hope, we ask for your help to do better, to reconcile, to heal, to soothe, to build up. So may we love you and neighbor and follow our Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Dear child of God, in our world it is often hard to remember that God loves you just as you are. God loves you not because you are good. God loves you, period. God loves us not because we are lovable. No, we are lovable precisely because God loves us. Alleluia. Amen. Since God has forgiven us, let us then forgive one another and pass the peace of Christ to each other. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us share signs of peace um, with each other and also with those who are worshiping online. Peace be with you, honey. Peace be with you. And so now, would the children please come forward for the children's sermon? This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. No. I'm not loud enough. <laughs> I'm not loud enough. So I was asking them if they've ever had a time when they ran into somebody that they didn't recognize, and didn't think they knew, or maybe sort of familiar but don't know for sure. Ever had that happen? Yeah, yeah, I got two nods here. How about out there? Anybody else? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it happens to me all the time. <laughs> all the time, yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, that kind of is, has something to do with our story today. Um, and then it's also going to tie into the idea of, as, as your mom said, we're going to be looking at worship all this month. Um, but there were some guys that were going on the road. Um, you know, we're still in the Easter season, right? You know that, right? Easter isn't just one day. We're still in Easter. So, 
Um, so they were on the road, and this story takes place actually at just after Jesus had been on crucified. And they, ro they were on the road leaving Jerusalem, and they were kind of sad, you know, and they were that Jesus was dead, that he'd been crucified. And they're on the road, and somebody comes up and joins them on the road. And they're kind of like, hmm, hmm, well, come on and walk with us. You can walk with us. They didn't know who it was. And so they're walking with this person, and the person's kind of like, you know, hey, what's new? <laughs> you know, what's going on? And they're like, are you the only person in Jerusalem that doesn't know what happened? And they, and they proceeded to tell them about Jesus and Jesus getting crucified and, and how sad they were and how upset they were. And so then this the stranger on the road started telling them the stories that they have known all their lives from the prophets that came before. And they're like, oh, yeah, we know. Yeah, we remember that. We remember how the guy that, you know, the God promised that one was going to come. Yep, we do remember. We kind of, and things are starting to remember and look a little familiar, but they'll keep walking. And now it's getting night, and they get to Emmaus. And they still didn't know who this guy was. Do you know who it was? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's what you were thinking? You're right, right? I had somebody tell me once, during a children's sermon, this was about 10 years ago, Jesus is always the right answer. <laughs> if not Jesus, God, you know, <laughs> go with those two, you know. Yeah, but it was, it was Jesus, but they didn't recognize Jesus because they didn't expect Jesus to be there, right? So they're walking and it's nighttime, and so they're going to stop at Emmaus, and the, Jesus said, I'll keep walking on. And they said, no, 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 it's dark. You come and stay with us. Have supper with us. And when they went and had supper with Jesus, Jesus took the bread. He said, okay, I'll stay. So he came, and then at supper, before supper, he took the bread, and he broke the bread. And what do you think happened when Jesus broke bread in front of these two guys? They recognized him. Yeah. They were like, oh, my gosh, Jesus. It was Jesus. Jesus is here. Jesus is alive. And he was, remember how he was telling us all this, all these times in these three years and so on and so forth. They recognized him. And then as quickly as Jesus had materialized on the road, Jesus vanished. But they were so excited that they'd seen Jesus that they ran back to Jerusalem and told everybody, we've seen him, we've seen him, he's alive. And it's one more part of that Easter story. But the part about that story we're going to look at is how they had a worship sense themselves with Jesus. On the road, they met Jesus, they greeted Jesus, they welcomed Jesus to be with them and to travel with them, and then they shared a meal with Jesus. And those are all elements that we have here in worship. We've done some of those already today. We've gathered, we've welcomed each other, We've heard a little bit of scripture, and we heard stuff. We had heard some what they call theology in the opening hymn. So we're going to talk some more about that. We're going to talk about sanctuary, this sanctuary place here. And as part of that, we're going to do a song. And we're going to ask everybody to help us sing. So we're all going to sing. It's a song called Sanctuary. Do you guys know that by any chance? Yes. Oh, you do. You do. Oh, we know it. Well, that song, we're going to sing that sanctuary song. So let's, can we sing that? It starts out, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. True and, uh, I can't do it without singing it. <laughs> uh, tried and true, holy for you, uh, with thanksgiving, I'll be a sanctuary, a sanctuary for you. Let's sing that, shall we? Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, tried and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. that 
living sanctuary part is what we're going to talk about in Sunday school today. And I think this might be some of what they're going to talk about here. So let's pray, shall we? Lord, prepare us to go out each and every day welcoming, practicing the practices of worship, which means that we will be a living sanctuary for you each day. We ask all this in the name of Jesus, the beloved one that you sent to us in whom we find our faith, our hope, and our salvation. Amen. Join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The first scripture reading is from Psalm 98. Listen now for the word of God. A psalm. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord of all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands, let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, hear the story several different ways um, on Sunday mornings because it really helps us um, uh, know the story so then we can embody the story as worship is this high point of the week and it informs our entire week. This story um, can and will inform our week. So I'm going to read it now from the book of Luke chapter 24 verses 13 to 35 and luke is the only gospel within which um, this story is told so listen now for the word of god now on that same day two of them were going to a village called emmaus about seven miles from jerusalem and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. And just for reference, um, this is the very end of uh, the book of Luke. So all of these things that had happened, the trial, the crucifixion, 
um, the, the telling of the resurrection, right? So now these two are talking about the things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came. He came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in town, in Jerusalem, who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, Well, what things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed them over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place, and moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? Well, that same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of the Lord. What are we doing here? And what could you be doing? Who has a laundry basket that should be going into the washer or to the laundromat? Anybody? Okay, here's the big confession. Who has a dish full of a dish full of dishes? Or not dish full, a sink full of dishes that could be done? Oh, good. Confession time is great. Okay, we can all give our testimony here. Uh, <laughs> Who has maybe a grocery shopping list that maybe you could be at Aldi or Meyer or Al's or wherever you go? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Gas tank empty? You got to fill up your gas tank. Maybe who has some work that you brought home over the weekend? All right, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for teaching you Sunday school, even though you have work over the weekend. What are we doing here? When I proofed the bulletin, I um, made sure to tell Diane that no, it wasn't a mistake on my part. I really wanted the word R in italics. Some people would tell us 
maybe our friends with doubts and unbelief, perhaps the cynics, and maybe even yourself in certain moments would tell yourself, you are wasting your time. There are so many other things you could be doing. Oh, who has weeding to be done and lawn to be mowed? I know we do. We've been at the theater all week. <coughs> what could we be doing with this hour, this extra hour in our week, and what are we doing here? When I um, was pregnant with Hannah, it was 2009, and um, I had been in ministry since uh, 2003, and I kept thinking, oh, how wonderful, because I was a little bit tired by then, you can imagine. Um, I was uh, really active in youth ministry at the church where I was serving, and I uh, preached once a month, and I did a lot of pastoral care, and um, kept myself quite busy, and I thought, oh my goodness, this will be wonderful once I have the baby. I don't have to go to church on Sundays. But once I had that baby, and once I missed a Sunday or two, not only had depression sunk in pretty deeply, but I knew something was missing. And I am not saying that just going to worship solved my depression problem. This is Mental Health Awareness Month, and we are observing it. And um, for sure, uh, therapy and good medication were on my list of ways to recover from that postpartum depression. And yet, on that list also included going to worship. There were things in my soul and in my body that I was missing. Why even, do you know this, taking in the deep breath in order to sing will work, won't be the, the full cure, but works on anxiety. Taking that deep breath, going into that part of your brain where poetry lives, singing the songs, and that's just the physical part of it, the spiritual part of it. This week, we are focusing upon the gathering. I'm so glad that um, Pastor Doreen got us started thinking about where we're going with this worship God theme. The, the entire worship service, you'll see in your bulletin, right? We begin with the gathering before God. And then we move toward the reading of the scripture and the um, understanding of the scripture, which is the part that we're in right now. And then we celebrate. We either celebrate communion or celebrate a baptism or celebrate some sort of milestone, um, like we did uh, last week when we celebrated Patty um, for the woman of the year. Um, sometimes we celebrate the kids and their milestones. Um, and then we go out to serve. And as Lois described this morning in adult education, why that is our church's logo. That is our way of being. Welcome, worship, celebrate, and serve. And so we gather. Why do we gather here? You know, I was telling the adult education class this morning that when I was a student at Princeton, um, it was a well-known rule, and it was a well-followed rule, that once you walked into the chapel at 10 a.m. every morning, if you wanted to go, it wasn't required, you were to be absolutely silent. And there was something to that, I will tell you. There was something to the, the silencing of the list of things to do that I was just talking about. And, of course, busy master's students, we all had a list of things to do. <laughs> Greek words to memorize, um, Hebrew letters to <laughs> recognize, <laughs> theology exams to study for. And, of course, there was all the social stuff going on and then all of our, you know, spiritual wrestling with our calls. And to go into that sanctuary and to be completely quiet and to be allowed to focus upon the presence of God. For the, the word worship in the Hebrew uh, text, it, it, it 
serious, it's, it seriously means to fall upon one's knees or fall upon one's face to worship God. The Anglo-Saxon Saxon word that uh, worship comes from, work Skype, um, is, um, actually means, um, you know, that to, um, well, that's to mean, that's the work of the people, but the, 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 um, the worship in the Old Testament is to fall upon one's knees and recognize the presence of God. And as much as I did love that, I also have never been a pastor who will um, acquiesce to the, um, the one or two people who say, shouldn't we be completely silent when we walk into worship, Pastor? Because there is something to this gathering. For some of us, whether we're very busy during the week or not busy at all, and we wish we were more busy, wherever we are in this place of our lives, this place in the sanctuary is a place where we will gather with people and tell someone exactly how we are when they ask us how we are. How was your week? This is a place where we might be honest with one another about our human experience, whether it's a joy or a sadness or maybe something that's a joy and a sadness together. We gather together and share our human experience. I was telling the adult education class, and I don't, I try not to um, spend up too much time, which I know I probably do, um, talking about my own children, but I hope this will resonate with you all too. Um, in the year 2023, you know, my four kids had chosen. Um, people in the congregation to be their prayer partner. And in the year 2023, um, three of the four um, died. And um, some of my kids didn't want to come to worship. They did not want to gather because they didn't want to be reminded that certain people were not here and would not be here. And I will admit that there were Sundays that I even felt that way, as childish as that sounds. But it became a rule in our household that we were to gather, even in our grief, especially in our grief. I know there are probably Sundays when you don't want to go. You know that really funny joke, right? about um, the mother yelling to her son and saying, um, son, you've got to get up and go to church. And he yells out of his door, but I don't want to go. Why do I have to go? Because you're the pastor and you're supposed to be preaching. <laughs> and maybe it's because there's a really great thing happening in our lives and we feel like we need to spend that hour on Sunday morning preparing for it, right? Or maybe we think, oh, things are so great in my life, I don't want to go there and where they're going to ask me to do something. I know you're out there. <laughs> or maybe like I was when I was 16 years old, I didn't want to go to church because I didn't want to have anything to do with God. God who I felt hadn't answered my most fervent prayer. But we keep on gathering those disciples chose to gather with one another. They didn't stay hidden with each other. Who knows what was in Emmaus for them? And actually, uh, scholars say that we don't even know if there was a town called Emmaus, which is kind of neat because it makes it, it could have been any town, right? They chose to gather with one another. And they chose to gather with this stranger. Rather than saying, you know what, you don't know our grief. You don't know what happened. We don't want to even talk to you about it. Right? They chose to gather with one another, and they chose to talk about how sad they were, and how much their, 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 their dreams and hopes have been dashed. In their doubt, they still talked about it. 
In their doubt, they were still welcoming. In their doubt, they were still wrestling. And that is what we do. We bring our human experience and we gather with one another, a lot of people who are a lot different than us. In adult education, we had a few questions to answer, and one of them was, um, who is the youngest person that you worship with and who is the oldest person you worship with? Who usually comes in late and who leaves early? And none of those were questions that were supposed to um, incite shame. Those were questions that were to get us thinking about with whom do we worship? And with whom do we disagree? (laughs) And yet, we keep on gathering together. We bring our human experience. And what happens when those disciples decide to gather, even in their grief, even in their disappointment, even in their doubt? Even, and what happens when they are hospitable to the stranger? Why, they are pointed, and I'm pointing up because that's how, you know, we humans think about God, but pointed, pointed toward the presence of God, something bigger than us, the entity, the very presence of our creator that gives us hope beyond our human experience. And that is why it became a rule in our household, even for me, that we got to keep gathering because God will meet us here in worship, just like God met those disciples in worship. Maybe it won't happen every week. You might walk out some Sundays and say, whoa, that was a dud. I get it. I pray it happens most weeks. I pray that you will find, as I have found, that when you miss a Sunday or two, the whole week doesn't seem organized around anything the high point of the week. It is the the thing, the way, either in the hymns or in the scripture, in the stories, or maybe in the connecting, that informs your week, that changes your week, and then you bring your stories of the week back to worship. You know, it would be strange if I didn't talk about this, um, play that I'm in this weekend. And I was thinking about, oh, Erica, what, what type of illustration could you give from this, this play, this, this character that I play, this mean old lady that I play, <laughs> that I've been playing every day since Sunday? This mother and the son, they have a very, very broken relationship, and they fight a lot on stage. And yet they keep coming together. They keep bringing their um, human experience to each other. They're both grieving and they keep talking about it. And somewhere, and I won't give a spoiler in case you're thinking about going, somewhere within that keeping on talking and keeping on bringing and, and bringing their grief to one another in this gathering, the Holy Spirit breaks in and shows them what is possible with God, who is beyond the human experience, who is greater than the human experience, who is the creator of the human experience. And we have that possibility today. We never hear about Cleopas ever again, and we never heard about Cleopas ever before. We don't even know the name of the other disciples. Some people think that she's an unnamed woman of um, the Gospel of Luke. It's on purpose, because they could be any of us walking on our road to Emmaus. Maybe in our disappointment, maybe in our grief, maybe in our despair or confusion, or maybe in our, you know, in another type of life or in another type of experience, in our joy. It could be us choosing to gather together and being surprised by the presence of Christ, which is made possible by the Holy Spirit. May it keep happening week after week. Amen. The children are excused, as many as there are, but the youth are going to stay for communion. Sorry. (laughs) Let us pray together. 
Let us pray together the affirmation of faith. In life and in death, we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, to hear the voices of people long silenced, and to work for others for justice, freedom, and peace. In gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks and to live holy and joyful lives even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth, praying, praying come, come, Lord Jesus. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now we come to the part where we respond to um, the word and, and celebrate. And one way that we celebrate is in our giving. And so we don't pass the plate here in order not to pass any germs, but yet um, there are, the plate is there um, as you um, enter or leave the sanctuary. And um, we also have a QR code that your smartphone can use. And of course, I know many of you prepare your giving and send it in the mail. My dear friends, now is the time for us to meditate upon um, the ways in which we respond to God's good word.
Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we thank you for the gifts that have been given with joy and with sacrifice and with hope. And we ask that you might call us to use these gifts as a congregation, to live into your calling, that we share your love as we welcome, worship, celebrate, and serve. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I only have um, a few, well, I just have one announcement to give, and that is that um, our elevator dun, 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 will not be able to be used on Tuesday and Wednesday, which means that the start of the process is happening. Um, but if um, you are somebody or if you know somebody who um, requires the need of the, uh, requires the need, requires the elevator, um, we, the ramp entrance will still be available, but on Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, the elevator will not be um, working. And I know that Carol has an announcement, and so does Jose. Good morning. Just a quick announcement. It's in your bulletin, but I'd like to have you come and sing in the choir. We're going to practice next Sunday here in the sanctuary at 915, and then the following Sunday we'll also practice here in the sanctuary, and then we'll will share our music in the worship uh, hour. Hello and good morning, church. Uh, a few things that I want to bring forward uh, on behalf of the mission committee. Uh, the first one is that we are in the process of promoting the Pentecost uh, special offering. Uh, which is a, one of the four special offerings that we as a congregation is committed in supporting the, um, uh, the wider ministries of the denomination, uh, which is focused on children at risk, youth, and young adults. And um, this, these uh, pamphlets are in the back in the narthex, right? Is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. uh, if you would like to take this as a resource in terms of looking at, uh, um, at the details. Uh, I do want to bring to your attention that uh, forty percent of those contributions do stay with our congregation, and we, as your mission committee, intends to, uh, to put that in the Presbyterian Youth Triennium Fund, uh, which is the event that's going to happen next year. Uh, and so, keep us uh, in uh, uh, your purse for that as we uh, uh, go about in uh, supporting the young people in our church. Uh, in a couple of weeks from now, we're going to have a third Sunday program, and we are inviting uh, a, a Christine Acosbade, who is the executive director uh, from the Stepping Stone uh, Domestic Violence Shelter. Um, and so that will be uh, following worship downstairs in the Undercroft, and so we invite you to join us as we uh, learn more about a, a Stepping Stone. Um, and finally, um, as Pastor Erica mentioned, it is a mental health month, and uh, one of the things that, that um, I want to personally share as well, um, through uh, uh, Third Sunday, um, uh, last time we uh, had invited Dr. Matthew Lowry of the Samaritan Counseling Center to speak about uh, that, that ministry that, that had, had originated here. Mm -hmm. um, and in that uh, a presentation, I felt called um, in uh, seeking uh, self-care myself and has uh, begun um, seeking counseling with Dr. Lowry. Uh, and, and he has been such a blessing to me in terms of helping me as I prepare for ministry. And so I think pastors as well should have good therapists. Yes. Um, and so... Um, yeah, the stigma is there at uh, the first second. I was like, oh, I don't want to go see a shrink or whatever to talk about my problems. But he really has helped me in, in, in more ways than one, and I've only seen him twice. And so keep me in, in, in your prayers as I continue to uh, seek uh, 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 mental health, uh, wholeness and healing in that uh, process. Thank you. Thank you, Jose, for helping to break the stigma as we observe mental Absolutely. health awareness here in the church. Thank you, and thank you for chairing the um, mission committee. 
My dear friends, I say this every time we um, celebrate the Lord's Supper, and this particular Sunday I feel like it has really special meaning because of the story that we've been um, working with all morning. We are told in Scripture that when those disciples were walking on their road to Emmaus, it was only in welcoming the stranger into their home, and it was only when the stranger broke the bread that their eyes were opened and they recognized him in their presence. And so we are given the same opportunity that when the bread is broken, we will recognize the Christ among us. Everyone is welcome at this table. Um, Everyone who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ is welcome at this table. Please share with me the great prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer, our creator. We thank you that you have created us, and we thank you that your creation can sometimes remind us of your glory, your goodness, and your chesed. We thank you that you created us in your image, and even when we rebelled against that image, you sent prophets and martyrs along the way, and then in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus the Christ to live as one of us. We thank you for that atonement in his birth and in his life and his sacrifice on the cross and in his resurrection. And so we remember, we remember his sacrifice in the breaking of the bread and in the sharing of the cup. And we ask that your Holy Spirit might be upon this bread that we break and the the cup that we share, and that your Holy Spirit might be upon those who share in this meal. We pray this morning for those who are listed. We pray for Dave Dougherty and Joanna Miller, for Jonathan Patterson, for Barb Reichert, for Shirley Ryan, for Mary Snyder, and Donna Wiseman. We pray for Barbara Vinson, who is now recovering from surgery. We pray for our military and their families and our AmeriCorps and Peace Corps workers and their families. We pray all of these in the name of the one who taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My dear friends, on the night of his arrest, our Lord Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body, broken for you. And in the same way, he took the cup, and he said, This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you eat of this bread or drink of this cup, You do declare the Lord's life and death and resurrection until he comes again. Come now, the joyful feast of the people of God has now begun.
Dear friends, this is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Dear friends, this is the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us now sing our prayer after communion. Bless me the tie, the bind, the words are in your order of worship. Bless be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred minds, his light to that above.
so if you have nothing else to speak about at lunch after worship, you can talk about how that last hymn was really unsingable. <laughs> and yet the theology was right on. My dear friends, let us go from this place as the disciples went from that place where their eyes were opened and go and tell the good news of our God, which meets us in our human experience. Let us go from this place in the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the compassion of the Holy Spirit, both now and forevermore. Amen, and go in peace. Amen.